Were they five? Three. 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 Okay, six o'clock. We're going to go ahead and get started. And we'll start with our pledge and then follow up with a prayer by Commissioner Patton, if you would, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Holy Father in heaven, we come before thy throne this evening, humbling ourselves as you are you as our creator. We pass your blessings upon us as we enter into this meeting. Bless us with the wisdom, the use of knowledge we have to the betterment of the community. May we find peaceful solutions to all of our issues and problems, and may they be few. Ask your blessings upon us in this season. May the joy of it not be just this month, but all the way through the year. And may we always be pleasing in your sight. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. All right, I'm glad my chair was behind me. Because I can feel. <laughs> well, welcome everybody out tonight. And uh, we'll get started with the first item on the agenda is approval of minutes. I make a motion we approve minutes. I'll second it. We have a motion and seconding further discussion. Those in favor, signify the aye. Uh, Post same. Motion passes. Approval of bills. Make, Make a motion to accept the bills. Second. <laughs> motion is second. Any further discussion? <laughs> Those in favor, signify with aye. I'm trying to keep them looking at me when I'm supposed to be saying something. <laughs> Those in favor, signify with aye. Uh, <laughs> Say that. Did you say it before? <laughs> you ever heard I'm it? I was say it fails. <laughs> Uh, under old business, first item is to approve the uh, updates to the employee handbook that we handed out last month's meeting. I looked through it and I found no, no major changes to it. Yeah, it was just wording phrases mostly, uh, wasn't it? So I just yeah. moved to approve the second reading of it. Second. second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion passes. New business. First item is adjust the housing authority penalties. Um, you want me to go yeah. On this? Yeah. Go ahead. Please. Matt came through the drive through last month with the payments for November. Um, he advised that they only cut their checks on Thursday. The check was cut on eleven seven. He was out that Friday, and then also that that Tuesday wasn't November. That Monday. He didn't give me a reason why he didn't get to us that Tuesday, but he finally brought the payments on Wednesday and asked that I asked you all to adjust those penalties. And I told him I would. How much are the bills? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Did we visit this last month? Yeah. We have done this before in the past, and we're looking back in the minutes. It was advised at that time it wouldn't be adjusted. Ever again, but now that's totally up to you. Well, you know, I, I question the idea that he helped on to those on the day he cut them. You know, he didn't even try to mail or anything, he just walked them in on Wednesday. Almost a week later. I think what happens, if I'm correct, the lady that does her checks, I don't know if she comes in in the evenings, I think she works somewhere else and maybe just does that once a week. Does on Thursdays, now? yeah. Um, and then, of course, I think it requires two signatures as well on the checks. But, but they didn't make an attempt to put it in the night pot. No, you know, the thing about it, the other thing about it, the bills come out, you've got them about 10 days, surely, that whoever writes the check can write the checks within that 10 day grace period. Sometimes they're even out sooner than that. They usually go out on what, about the 24th, 25th? As soon as I get my disconnects on the 24th, I get my billing done and mail the next day. Uh, I, I make a motion we don't adjust because I remember going through this about not too long ago. And I'm going to abstain from anything. We get to on well, that. We have a motion. We don't have the sad that. thing is, I don't have a motion. My daughter's on that too. No, really. I don't know if I should I stay on I, that. I don't know that we have to have a motion to even do this, do we, Mary? Uh, and I mean, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, if we don't need a motion, I don't think. I think it's just because the policy is in place now that 
the penalties to be paid. And, and if I remember right, when we, we visited this the last time, we let them know that we would not adjust it again. So okay. I, I know that may sound a little hard now, <coughs> but. Okay, Mike, next item is approve the police shop with a cop. Since it's money going out, second. We've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, saying five with aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next item is to appoint Larry Smith to the Planning and Zoning Board. I make that motion to appoint Larry Smith. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, saying five with aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Where does he live? Four Street. Street. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and these next three are part of corrections on some annexation issues. The first one is to approve the resolution for Rains Avenue. I got. We're going to do these separately. I make a motion. We accept the resolution for Rains Avenue connection correction. Refresh my mind. What is it we were correcting? Right oh, it's just, know, it's where the state it. maps was off or or off, and we, we had, had to go in because they had a pen at A instead of A. I remember that. Mm -hmm. I forgot. Six so inches. Good map. Okay. Six inches. Yeah, whatever it was. I'm just. What, you're right. It wasn't very much, but I didn't yeah. realize it was. Six. Well, I'm I'm just using. I'm being a little sarcasm there because like we've been dealing with we've been dealing with this with the state for what almost nine years now. I've forgotten that. I seconded. We've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next item is the same resolution for the tractor supply part of their property. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. And the third one is the East 8th Street Souter area. That one, so moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. And that motion passes. Next item is to declare surplus of wood sidearm mower. Yes, uh, we're going through our audit for the 2018-2019 fiscal year, and there's a couple pieces of equipment that has not been used in several years. Uh, to take it off our inventory list, they uh, recommended uh, declaring surplus we can sell it. Or dispose of it. And one is a Woods SO5 sidearm mower, and the other is a old blacktop rover. Is the one that's down there where the? Yes. You won't get enough for that. What junk? I mean. I mean that's. It, it's, it's on our inventory list. Oh, this is a way to get it all. Clean it up. Is it running? No. No, it's shot. It's is it something? Somebody I've seen bad parts? asphalt rollers before. That's a bad asphalt roller. Is there anything anybody want for parts? Everybody say that. I'm telling you. <laughs> just lawn, lawn decor. Well, I said it to that <laughs> We had put on the list to fix, and now we just. Well, I make a motion that we surplus those items. Do we need two separate? Yes. Make a motion that we surplus the woods sidearm mower. I'll say good day. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. 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 Opposed, same. I make a motion we declare the surplus black top rover for sale. Second. second. Motion and a second. Any, <laughs> any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion passes. Put in Kevin Jard for lawn decor. It sounds like he's interested. Hey, I could sand. You could, I would, <laughs> honestly, this is what I would do. I would sandblast it and paint it and put it as like a yard ornament. That's what I would do. It's okay. about all the good it would do. Do I hear an offer? No. I think so. yeah, if you haul it up there and sandblast it and paint it, I'll take it. <laughs> or do you want it to spoon feed you too? 
No. I just, you asked what the offer was. I made an offer. Next item, we're going to accept a bid on this uh, Ford Ranger. I think Mary shut that. The high speed came in at 93209 from a Clinton Davis in Louisville. Was the high bidder on the go deals. I'm curious. This was on there once before, wasn't it? Yes. Did it sell then? It did. Uh, a local person bought it. They were making payments, and after three or four payments, they decided they didn't want it. So, come back. Uh-huh. Refresh my memory. What about eight hundred? What we sold for last? I was eleven. I so oh, was eleven. Huh? Yes. I make a motion to accept the bid. Second that. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify with aye. Uh, Post same. Motion Just passes. Don't do it on payments. No. <laughs> we actually made exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. But that, <laughs> well, rarely does that. Do this over and over. Yeah. Rarely does that happen. And if it's going to Louisville, you may <laughs> see it. Yeah. The, the annexation correction. What exactly were you correcting? On that? It was worth, from what I understand with the state, they they went back several years ago and they started doing everything by GPS. And they went back on, and we've had several of them over the last 10 years that we've had to do this with, where a call from an engineer would go to a point and it didn't exactly line up with where the state said the GPS point should line up. So we've had to go back and redo so it. Just make it, get an engineer. To what they say? Yeah. Okay. And the Ford Ranger, what was it just a. Uh, not a Ford Ranger, but was it just a little work truck? Work truck, right? That's all I got. Mm-hmm. David, um, a couple things. We've got our lockers in. We're in the process of installing them, and then uh, fire department, police department partner up at Toys for Tots. It was a drive at Walmart to uh, pull toys in for kids in Ohio County. Um, a lot of them's going to go to the housing authority over here in Big Ram. And right now, combined, there was 145 toys donated with eight coats, and there was 400 plus dollars that was also donated that they will go buy more coats and toys wow. and stuff and be given out here. I think December 23rd, I think, is when they're going to do it. But they'll take them down like the housing authority and different places like that and give these toys out to kids that won't have anything for Christmas. It was a real successful move to drive. All right, Tommy. I'm good. Dustin. <laughs> Jody. Chris. Yeah, I was wanting to uh, see what kind of agreeable measures we could reach to uh, kind of prevent my property from being obstructed during these second street <coughs> festivals. Basically, uh, I've tried several different ways to keep my parking lot from being covered up with, you know, patrons of the festivals and things and their vehicles and and uh, vendors as well. The vendors are getting better, but we still have people coming up in there wanting to park. And naturally, people want to get as close as they can to the festival. And uh, of course, I'm in agreement that uh, I want what's best for all the businesses in downtown Beaver Dam, but primarily I have to look out for my own. And I'm gonna have three tenants, three apartments to rent out here very shortly, and I need those people to be able to utilize that rear parking lot without obstruction. And, and basically what we run into, I'm not going to be able to run down there and barricade off that parking lot every time we have a festival. So I don't know, I, I, this, at this point I appreciate you've tried to put up some barricades at the end of the alley to discourage people from coming up there. But what I'm not sure what to do at this point is, how are my tenants going to get in and out to my parking lot? when these big activities are going on. If we've got the alley barricaded and then Second Street barricaded, then there's no possible way they're going to find a place to park on the street. So where are they going to go? I mean, I mean I've mean, i tried every, every <coughs> possible to keep people off of that area, but it just, it's just an impossibility, you know. Could they cut through up between the two buildings, you know, the, the, where they have the, the gun shoot and the other building we own? Could they not cut up that alley and then go in that way? Wouldn't that get in the back way that way? I mean, if I'm mm-hmm. thinking would, where you're going, I think that would, that could possibly be a way to get in there. Probably the closest. Do you have parking well, tenants parking off. only no, signs? Yeah, I've got five signs up down there. Yeah, I've got five signs. Wow. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about, Chris? Where you go right down this street, go down toward on this main. What is this? 
Madison. Broad, Madison. Go down Madison. Go down Madison, and after you go by this first building, take a left between the two buildings. There's a little alleyway. It runs right out, comes right out over on that street that's behind your building. They can go up there, take a left, and go right into their parking place. Because I, I know we didn't lock it off because I was here Saturday, and it was not locked off. So I know you could have gotten there if you had to have, you know, that there Saturday. Hmm. But that that's just an alternative. I'm not saying that's the way you have to go. I'm just yeah. saying that would be an alternative to get in and out that it wouldn't be blocked off. Because I was here Saturday, and I went down there and looked, and it was not blocked. It was They were having a gun shoot, and that's the reason I walked hmm. down there to look at it. I do never been to that do your son say that violators? Yeah, I told him to move the barricade. I know earlier in the day I was here to get things from the building. And, yeah. and well, now, the barricade was on, on First Street, but it wasn't on the alley. That's what I'm saying. They could have gone up the alley and taken the left and come in right behind your building. On this other little section of it. Yeah. It's not really an alley. It's on our, our property. Yeah, it's, it's between two buildings. What it is. We own both buildings, so it wouldn't be like you would be affected. Yeah. Do your son say violators will be towed? Yeah. Have you ever told anyone? Yep. Well, I'm out of options then. <laughs> I'm just thinking about in Louisville. You know, that's a lot. Yeah. Well, uh, that happens a lot Able there. Nights in so, the we church we notices, told, because we hate to tell people, so we, yeah. we printed up a bunch of notices, and we just try to remember who we left the notice. You know, or take a picture of their license plate. But we leave notices because we get a lot of beef traffic. During colder weather, rainy weather, of course, people want to get as close as they can to the door. So we just try to leave notices, and then when we know big festivals are coming up, we've been trying to barricade off so that we can still get in there to load up trailers or, or whatever's going on or drop stuff off. But uh, what's coming up in the near future is I'm not going to be able to put those barricades up because we're going to have people living there, and for them to have their own designated parking areas, I need to be able to prevent the extra overflow of parking from the festival. You know, I come in late Saturday night and I had a van and the car and stuff sitting up in there. I didn't have time to barricade it off Saturday. I didn't do it anyway because it was a Christmas festival, but um, but we did have people parked in there. People kind of hanging out of the parking lot. But, and it's just going to be more impractical and, and uh, hindrance to the people that are going to be living there, basically. I mean, that's also one of the things you have with downtown living. It's yeah, it is hard, I know. But that's the only alternative. I mean, he, they could... Yeah, they can drive through. Well, there. even if you use the that barricades, be I know it's not the best case situation, but it'd be better than not being able to get in your parking spot. If I were a tenant, I wouldn't mind to move the barricade, pull through, and pull it back so I could get in my parking spot. To, mm -hmm. Is that... It's very doable. I'd rather do that than not have my parking place. And I know I know it's a nuisance, but it's not every day, I hope, that you're not losing your parking right. every day. I hope no. we don't have a day like we had Saturday every, every weekend down here. Well, no, that's not what I mean. I hope we got businesses that want it. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One and I'm had, part of one of the downtown One of them had their biggest day in nine years this weekend. Yeah. 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 <laughs> They're there. They know. <laughs> um, I, there's not really anything else to do. Is any... Did, I, I haven't got them. This is one time I don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. Well, the bad part about there's no way for them, they can't turn down 2nd Street to get their park. They'll have to come in the back way. Yeah, everybody that's finding their way up in the lot, they're coming in off of 62. 62. That's what I'm saying. And that gives them another alternative to come between the two buildings. That gives them two ways to get in there. But like you say, if you don't block it off down there, is everybody in the brother's going to come in that alleyway and park up there where your building is. Unless, like you say. Yeah, I think if there's any open avenue, they're going to find it. And they're going to mm -hmm. get it. They, they, you, you I, mean, it I mean, you know, um, I know last year a couple different times we had the barricades up and people just moved the barricades and pulled up there anyway. We had vendors backed up in there with the big trailers and stuff and, and mm -hmm. we finally started trying to use boards and screw the barricades together and people still tried to move them. We had some of them broke apart and kicked out of the way. So, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's almost an impossibility. I don't know if we could put up enough signs to get through to everybody that that, that, that area is for private use. 
Do you have any suggestions? I mean, have you given thought? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I don't really, I don't really know. I mean, uh, it looks to me like the park would be more suited for festivals than Second Street. But, <laughs> but if that's not something we can get away from, maybe we could move the stage trailer and, and kind of direct everything toward this side. If we put it in the park, it doesn't have the downtown vendors. That's the key. And they, 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 they created most of the festivals. Mm -hmm. And these festivals have been going on for 20 times. Christmas is yeah. 15 plus. Strawberry Festival, 20 plus. The music's been four or five years. Uh, I mean, most people, when they, when they get a place downtown, they know it's there when they come because it's there before they were. So that's... And like I said, I talk to business owners all weekend long, and the comment I get is bring more stuff in, have more events. Yeah, and I don't disagree with that, but at the same time, I need to be able to use my property for what I have. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, is there any other parking lot back in there that he could that that there, people could use where they could get in and out in and out quicker? Well, it wouldn't be right up at the back door. We, we own that whole park right over there. We can. Well, people park there too, so I mean, it's not like they could. Yeah, but you could possibly you could possibly do some reserve parking there. Do we have anyone that is parking cars during those festivals? Mm -hmm. So maybe that would be a good solution is to have volunteers. Well, um, that's it would be good if it was in a contained location, but you've got from Oldham Park to the other park and both directions and everywhere. that area, you know, maybe we could have somebody volunteer to just park well, cars where it would block that. We had to try to, some people tried to watch that this time, and uh, apparently it didn't work as Completely well. Cause well, you, you weren't paying your volunteers enough. <laughs> well, of course, they were there early with the uh, vendors and stuff to make sure the vendors weren't. Yeah. The vendors were here at, se at 7 o'clock. Of course, now, like with Sorry. Scott, even the people that lived over his bum, we've always had a parking spot set up for them over in our parking lot, and they yeah. just parked over there and walked across. Because they couldn't get to 7th That's why I give an alternative where they could park where... and I. And I'm, I'm, I'd be the first one to be guilty of saying, hey, man, I want to park by my house or my apartment or whatever. But sometimes, like I said, it may be we have to reserve some place to put them just for that day or two. Because this, this was Friday night and Saturday. I know the Strawberry Festival, that's five, what, four nights now? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that's a little bit different. But. but again, it turns out any downtown property, you have that kind of issue. Any Even though by Monday, long. the Strawberry Festival is kind of cleared out. So let's make sure mm -hmm. that's one day out. Well, I know when you have the bigger events like the Strawberry Festival or the October Festival was pretty big this year, and I know I, I spent over an hour. There was five cars parked on my lot, and I spent an hour trying to get them off. I'm, I mean, I had them announcing at the stage that I was about to tow these vehicles off, and I had a truck a tra and a tra 20 foot trailer loaded from front to back trying to get into my property to unload this trailer, and I can't do it. I mean, I can't park down here on 62 to do that. Yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, it, it was a it was an ordeal. I mean, I really thought I was going to have to tow all these cars. In fact, the tow guy was on the way when the last car finally came and moved. We had one person that either wasn't hearing the announcements or just wasn't planning on moving. But finally, they, they showed up and by accident or, or otherwise and finally left. But, but it was, uh, I don't know, it's been an over an hour trying to get that resolved so I could just get in there and do what I had to do. Do you feel that my suggestion would work? Well, I mean, it's a nuisance, I know, but you, you've got a nuisance already. Well, maybe we could put up some, you know, I don't, I don't know, you mean the city putting up some barricades and big no parking signs or something like that? Or, or that doesn't do any good. No parking be on That's what I'm saying. They just well, I mean, you were saying you put barricades at 1st Street. Barricade that alley between the Ashby Building and the Quonset Hut. Where they could get in and out that way but but yeah yeah and then do it yeah because i know they do have parking behind, behind the shoe store from his stuff. corner to yeah. the that little brick building there where the well pump house is at but you can tell people all the time how not to park and they're still going to do it oh. so when we did the park we put so many signs that said do not park on the grass and paul and i were walking down through there and we almost got run over <clears throat> we were in the middle of the black grass and a car come Missed us by what this far? Come flying through the grass. 
And there was a few signs that said, don't park in the grass. Yeah. Well, it didn't say you can't drive in the grass, though. Hey, Matt took <laughs> me and him out. I'm, it was close. <sighs> I don't understand why people just don't. Chris, it may be a trial and error. We may Follow just have to rules. keep working at it until we figure it out. <laughs> that may be what we have to do. And I'm not being trying to be put you off or anything. I'm just saying it's probably going to be a trial and error. We're going to have to figure out what works the best in certain situations. Yeah. And we'll try and work with you as best we can. We will. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. And try, you know, try those barriers and see if that works when your tenants well, get I mean, in there. We, we, like I said before, we barricaded the entire parking lot off for, yeah. for the last couple of years and people just, left. like you said, they'll move them out of the way and do what they need to do and then they'll go on and yeah. someone else comes along and says, oh, well, them barricaded ain't there no more. Well, we barricaded Madison Street off for the 5K Saturday morning and the rudders took off and they were supposed to come back down and go back down Madison. That's why we had it blocked off. It wasn't. 30 seconds after the race started, here comes this big band and then just run right by the barricade and just kept on coming. Mm-hmm. One suggestion might be to put on the sign residents only. Because mm-hmm. if you just put no parking, people just assume you're just... You just don't want to park there, so mm-hmm. there's like there's no reason for this. And, you know, people are simple. <laughs> yeah. So if you put on there that residents, yeah, residents parking only. Residents probably better mm-hmm. than tenants. I hate to sound facetious, but in Kentucky, if you put a barrel out in the middle of that street and paint it, don't look in that barrel, you'll be run over. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> would go do it. Yeah. Probably. I think that would work it amazes me what they do. Larry? Yes, uh, we'd like to talk about the city doing an impound lot for cars that are seized for DUIs, for uh, no tags, expired tags, insurance, or whatever the police department uh, has them impound for. Uh, talked to Mike a couple weeks ago, and he said, I think last year, that uh, they had roughly 100 that was impound. Uh, the state would allow us to charge $25 per day per vehicle, and then we could charge $25 for paperwork uh, to log the money and also release it. Uh, I know the police department's sh- uh, short now. They was talking about maybe wanting a seventh officer, and this would be a, I think it would be a good extra way to to uh, revenue some revenue, revenue some ex- extra money. On average, how much? How many days does the car stay? We don't know. We don't know. They don't come to us. You know, you just, oh, what the don't have any way uh, I just thought there'd be an average, like what you thought they'd stay. I didn't know there's. I know there's a lot of work that goes into it. I know there's a lot of responsibility that goes into it. Uh, liability. Uh, That's what I was wondering we'll about to, too. We have to have a superior in town. And it'll take a pretty good size in town lot. I don't know if we have one suitable. I don't know what talked about. Maybe a building somewhere. Uh, but you're going to have to have uh, a secure lot where people can't get in. Uh, where there won't be, would be but one or two allowed in it. Because once something goes in there, we're responsible for being deemed. <laughs> Seized for evidence, then it's it's evidentiary, and any access there's a chain of custody that has to be followed. Well, those would have to be put inside a building somewhere. Maybe the others that we uh, towed, like no insurance, things of that sort, they could probably be left out in a secure lot. But it's going to have to be a secure lot. It can't just be in a lot somewhere. Anything that is seized, Tracy Beatty told us that we could bring to his lot, and if it, if it what he had recommended was if if it goes to a seizure where we have access to it when we sell the vehicle, that we would split part of the money with him. So as far as the seize, that's, that's not an issue. I mean, right now, all your road bike, your record services, they're making money off of it. They're making money off of what our police officers is doing. This is a way to put money back in our pocket to hire another officer. When, they, got, take, me, when they take one of the vehicles in, out, say, say just pick a lot, I don't care, any of the people... Browns, Greg's, whoever. I'm not picking them up. Well, I'm just saying, but I'm just saying, you put it on their lot. Do they have to? Do they have to inventory it just like you would have to do? I don't know if they do or not. But it's I mean, are they supposed to? They're, they're supposed to. They're, they're supposed to. 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 They're supposed to.
They come to them. I know what we do. We'll have to. Mm -hmm. Because if they come back to say, oh, there was ten dollars worth of change in there, and we're like, no, and they say, oh yeah, what? And they say, no, what? we inventory it right here. It is. You know, we take pictures of vehicles, but you know, they'll have to be. There's a lot to do. Like I said, I'm do we have any issue. idea what the liability insurance would be or something but, like that? Uh, there again, you got, and I don't know, Larry said he talked to some record drivers. You're going to have to get some record drivers on board to do this. Uh, and I think if we do let them, we need to say, okay, this is, this is what we're going to allow you to charge, not just to bid it out and say, you know, well, what would you take to be on this record list? And then and they bid it out and they, they say, we'll take $300. Well, you, I mean, and you come and you have to pay a, a $300 record bill at that point. I've, I've, talked to, I've talked to a few record services, and what they're telling me is they would actually lower their price because we, the, what we're reading into, the people are having three record services that they're using and they're on a rotation. They lower their price to haul a car in the city limits of Beaverdale because we're only two and a half, three miles long, maybe a mile wide. So they'll lower their price, and not only when, when we seize one for DUI or whatever, when there's a wreck in the city of Beaverdale, they're the same three people we're gonna call. So they're right now, they're gonna get the wreck vehicle, vehicles and get the insurance money off of them. So they're gonna actually lower their price to, to move a seized vehicle. And I don't think that's the issue, really. But like they said, if well, it's you know, Michael saying they charge three hundred dollars, they're not going to charge three hundred dollars. Yeah, but if it's evidence, I'm I'm thinking more from the security and liability well, aspect. Well, if, if, if it's a seizure on evidence, it'd go to Tracy Beatty's lot in Hartford County mm -hmm. Sheriff's Department. And then, no, liable, then right? who's liable for it then? Is if it's on his lot? Well, tra Tracy and them is going to do if all the inventory. If they're it's our do, vehicle, they're going to do the on inventory and the paperwork, and it, you know, if it goes to a, a sale they would get a portion of the money. Larry, have you done any uh, pr summary of previous work on what our property would have to do to it to make it uh, possible to have these impounds? What do we need to not, do? Not, not at this point, not at this point. We need to know what we need to improve if we need to make our property, what the investment we need before we can really move on. Because we have no idea what we're putting What, in, what it's going to cost to get into something in. like that. The property may not be up to grade. Mm -hmm. So can you get that together? Then we'll know what we are viable to do, what we can't do. My suggestion would be, Charles, as Commissioner for Police and Property for Police, maybe get you and Mike and Larry and Tracy get together and Fine. sit down and... I don't know. I don't know. And again, I had talked to you, you had talked to Tracy. I don't know. I don't know. But if we get into it, we pick it over to his lot, I don't think he's gonna send somebody out there to inventory. It has to be inventoried at the scene. I'm not sure. That that vehicle has to be inventoried at the scene. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at extra ways to get money for a seventh well, officer. I'm curious. So if if a record service comes and picks it up, they inventory it. No, no, they don't. They don't right now. But now you're talking about two different two separate uh, apples and oranges there. As far as as far as if we if we start doing that, there's there's going to be questions. I don't, for whatever reason, we get our integrity gets questioned way more than your tow truck driver. That I, I don't know why. Would it, would it be in order to say that we need to put this up to a further study? No, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we can't. I don't think we need to make really any kind of vote tonight. We need to put it. I think it needs to be quite a get, bit more. Get some if, if information. A study. Impounded, whatever you want to call it. The record service does not have to inventory it, but the police do. I don't know what they're if they're supposed to or not, is what he's called a few cities. I don't I know. Told, who. I know what called one and talked to them. Okay, so he called one, and their policies and procedures on it are that that if that vehicle has to be inventory. Mm -hmm. At the scene. And the sheriff does. The sheriff inventories there. The mayor, mayor called one city, and they do a sale every two years, and they generate sixty thousand dollars. I mean, you know, in, in sales of seized vehicles. Yeah, that's the same thing I thought. Is it comparable in size, two hours? For 12 months. You think it's comparable, two hours? 
Um, it's, it's a bail. Really West Point. It is a bail. Once you, once you, take you yeah, I think it is. It's in the nature of the bail. It is. And it has to be, it has to be secured and protected as long as it's on city property. And if, if something untoward happens to the vehicle while it's impounded, then the city's ultimately responsible. So it, it has to be secured, and, and obviously it needs to be inventory. I don't know whether to see it or no. not, but it really needs to Let's be inventory <coughs> uh, very quickly, and it, those inventories need to be secured. Well, I definitely think we can just take what for now and see if we get a little more. I still like the idea of Charles, if you don't care to get with him and mm -hmm. you know, yeah. set something up. And Need to know what we're getting into before we jump in. Do a little more digging anyway. Okay. Larry, you have anything else? Uh, yes. Uh, Larry Smith, when we disappointed to one of the boards, he had a sewer issue uh, last Wednesday or last Thursday, and he called a plumber to come verify and check it out. Uh, in the meantime, we was up there and we jetted our line and we had a blockage in our line. He's asking if the city would pay his plumber for coming to check it out. And I told him that, you know, number one, he should have notified us first for us to check our mains before he went and hired a plumber. And uh, he was at $280. And I told him that I would bring it before the board, but I would not promise that. Hmm. Hey, now. Let, let me make sure I understand. He he contacted you and told you that he no, had a block. No. He didn't before he had a plumber. He, he had, a, had an issue Wednesday night maybe, mm -hmm. and then he had a plumber Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. And we we have certain lines we routinely go out go around and jet, you know, mm -hmm. because there are potential problems. And he seen my guys and he called them over there and my guys run the line jet through his line, and you know had a blockage there. Mm -hmm. His line on but his. But he had already called the plumber. He had, he had, the plumber was already there. Oh. On his line, service line or the main. The service line. Well, we're not responsible for his we're service not. line anyway. No, no. I, I can't see that. So I, I told him I didn't think we would. We never had I mean, to pass. I don't know he why we. Us first and well, we're not even necessarily supposed to go do it on his service line. Well, it, it was in our mind what the problem was. Where, where he tied into the main. Mm -hmm. But it was still his service lines were at that interstate, that conjunction? When we jetted our main, it took care of his problem. Okay. So it, it's, it's either there where it connects or just downstream slightly. So there actually would have been more people, possibly. Hmm. So would there have been a difference in... The outcome, if he had contacted the city first? We'd have went up there and jetted our line. You know, we'd check a main and jetted it, and then he would not. And then there would have been no need for a... He just, you know, what likes. I kind of thought of, he, he jumped the gun. Yeah. Shoot. I, I, I personally don't see where we would be liable for it on, on someone's property like that. But it's a dangerous precedent to get into. Mm-hmm. Okay. Larry, anything else? Does it need to be in the form of a motion that we don't? No. Or we just say we don't? Yeah. Don't, we don't. Be in the form of a motion if we were going to do it, because it would be okay. something above and beyond. Okay. Jim, do you have anything? Not right up there. Off the bat. Yeah, I can make it. Just a few things. And the first one, do you have any idea when you're going to get your storefront open? I'm excited about downtown businesses. <laughs> well, I don't think we're going to open it. Are you not? No, okay. Eventually, I believe we'll have our offices in the, the lower left side of the building that we've not decided what to do with the right side. I think we're, we're, we're on the process right now of selling out of the event rental business. Gotcha. Gotcha. But you might possibly rent it out to yeah, we, someone. Yeah, we might. Yeah, we, we would be, uh, you know, considerable to... Yeah, because I know there are people that look for downtown yeah. buildings. Do you have a timeline on when you think you'll be done with your facade construction? I believe the apartments will have to save about this for the year. Uh, it looks probably. amazing what mm -hmm. you've done. Thank you. I Just appreciate that. It's been a long road. 
I have a friend that used to live in one of the upstairs apartments, and I took a picture and said, look at where you used to live. Look how amazing it looks. You should see the upstairs apartments now. I bet they're nice. Yeah. There's a big difference. What do you think about the facade on the... I'm not sure. That's kind of what led to... Um, that's kind of what led to selling the, the event rental business is uh, shortage of funds to finish the downstairs and, and the facade and everything. We're kind of, kind of struggling. So that building has just ate up a ton of money. So basically, you know, it just it was it was really more expensive than we ever thought it would be for the demo work. And then when we started back with the restoration process, it just kept getting more and more expensive. It's hard to find people to do what you can do for the same price you can do it for, if that makes any sense, you know. So, it's hard to find people to do anything. So, uh, <laughs> it's been a long road to hoe, and, um, and uh, we're just kind of at the point where we're going to have to get the apartments available so we can get that building to pay for itself before we can make another move. We, we definitely want to get the downstairs finished with new storefront glass and, and the stonework on the front of the building and everything that way. The building looks better as the downtown, and then, and then we can look at either utilizing those spaces or leasing them out to businesses or something like that. Is there any way that you all could dress the windows up to make it look nice? Well, is that a possibility? Well, I think what we're looking at doing is maybe just kind of painting some of that lower stuff uh, as much as possible to, to preserve the, the, the OSP that's there and to make it look more appealing when you do more. Yeah. Okay. So if anyone is interested, you would take phone calls about your... Yeah, we would take phone calls about leasing out the space. Uh, I could have to get back to you on the square footage. Well, I, I try not to get in the middle of this, but we do get calls on a fairly regular basis. Is there anything downtown for rent? And if, if I know there is, I, you call and you all can make any kind of discussion on how much space and all that kind of stuff. Is that, yeah. I don't need I that. I mean, commercial properties, although we're in the middle of creating the website, so it'll probably be a few months, but... If it's not done for a few months, then yeah. And then one other thing, Robert Bailey, I don't know if he's contacted you, Kevin. I don't. He's wanting to talk to someone about using the corner sometime. And I know we've talked about it before. Cannot remember what was said. What did he want it for? I don't know if like a church service or singing or. Which I know you know probably not now because it's well it's supposed to be called tomorrow so. I've got his number if um, I hadn't contacted me. anyone needs it. Lives up on Main Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know him. He's, yeah. His wife went to school with my wife. Yeah. And then one and other we've thing. Had, I, I, I'm I mean, sorry. We've had other people use it before. The only problem we've run into is they tend to want to do stuff. I don't know what he, his plans are, but on a Friday night and they complain when sounds on second going on or they want to use it on a Saturday night and they're talking about way there's a concert going on to park and it's loud and they can't. So and that's just something yeah. they need to think yeah. about. Okay, yeah. Anyway. They might. And then parking. <laughs> they don't want to block parking. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the other thing I was asked about and I think you and I were going on to the commission whenever we did the downtown stuff or I can't remember for sure I know we walked a bit the street lights the pre the pretty lights the pole lantern. yes I've been asked is there any way possible that one could be put up near the intersection of third I don't know what it would get into you'd be ripping up sidewalks to run power line up or to the it underground facility if we're going to it would be put a pretty good distance to run it uh, I'm afraid I won't say no, but because I'm all for it, but I'm afraid it's going to be quite expensive. To Wonder why we stopped where we did. I'm not sure, and that was done. It ought actually, to go. that was done a couple of years before we went on. Well, I was trying to remember yeah. the sidewalks because I know Cause I was Mary had us to do a walk through or something with it, or I can't remember. Maybe we had run for off. I don't remember, but I know she had us doing something. We was doing it when we was doing the paint the town stuff. It was before that walk through. It was before that, yeah. It was before the sidewalks were actually put to him. That I think that was in two thousand six or seven, Wayne. Mm -hmm. I don't know what year it was. Or maybe I was just on some committee and she asked me to. I don't know. I can't remember half of what I've done. <laughs> but so, 
where does that need to go? What needs to be done with it? We'd have to talk to them. And they want a bench. What does? <laughs> Well, Valerie Tanner, I think, was instrumental in getting that one. At the more towards second, not at the third. I think a light would be very nice. A bench. I don't. I don't know why that stopped. Yeah, because it's part of downtown, so it seems to Where's me the like last it would continue. Where's the last one at? In front of the beauty shop. Or is it further up? I think it's a little further up. Did you guys get a grant for that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's probably why it stopped there. Right it may have been. And that very well may have been. I mean, that's why we do it with And that's not something, you know, immediately, but if you if you could check into it, even after the first of the year, just to see what kind of cost would be involved and if it is even a possibility. It would be astronomical, but I can get you a figure. Like... Major, lo what kind of astronomical are you talking? Five to eight thousand dollars. Oh, okay. Well, that's not as astronomical as what I was thinking. When you say astronomical, I'm thinking twenty or thirty. <laughs> I need some of your money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> the sidewalk would have to come on yeah. to run on the same circuit. And that's another thing: is what circuit is it on? What circuit is it on? Is it going to be enough? The breaker that it's on will trip. It's going to be separated. You know. There's a lot of things that could be looked at. Yeah, I even thought about. Maybe them saying something to tourism, because I don't know if any of you guys have been in Shepherd's Market, but holy Toledo, mm -hmm. she has got booth space like crazy, and if it all gets filled, it's probably going to bring a lot of people in. Has she got her other building? That's the no. one that she's really? JoJo has moved in there. Oh, and the, and the, the other in the uh -huh. furniture store. Uh -huh. I know they were even done with it. So. Yeah, it's not completely finished. JoJo's moved in there and uh, maybe one or two other vendors. I was in Louisville all weekend, so I, I don't know. And whenever I was there Thursday, I was in a very much of a hurry. But uh, if they all fill up, I think it'll bring in some traffic, especially with JoJo moving there. Mm -hmm. you know, I think the lighting is, is placed for the vendors to park to see. And up there on their corner, it's actually painted yellow. There's no parking there on Main Street mm -hmm. where she's wanting light. So I don't know if that's a bit of a deciding factor. Maybe light up that yellow thing where people see it better and don't park there. Still park there. When I was in there the other day, yeah. When I was in there the other day, they said, "Don't park out front where the yellow is." There, and I said, uh, "That's why the yellow's there. You're not supposed to park there." <laughs> I'm too much like my dad. I'm a rule follower. And I said, I'm sure y'all don't want no parking sign up out here for any business. No. Sounds like to me uh, a good economic developer would get you guys a parking garage and be <laughs> We get easily. Say, when are you going to start construction on that, Miss Economic Developer? There's your money right there, Larry. And get us a light. There you go. No, I didn't say we have any money. Oh. I think that's all I have. Go ahead and check with Dwayne. I guess sometime when he's. Yeah, I can check with Dwayne on the, on the circuit, but I'd have to talk to Hollis about the, well, the concrete. Yeah. He had to restamp it and, and, you know, if he can find the pattern. Phew. Of course, yeah. you know, the, light, else. the light itself is about $1,900. And, you know, who knows, we might get some matching funds. So. Okay. Uh, Lisa Barton, the park is good, but I just forgot to come in and tell Mary. There's a street light out on 62 right across from Kevin Fielder. And uh, that would really brighten it on up. On the Mexican side, Mexican restaurant side. Right on Tommy on James. The side. <laughs> <laughs> on the Mexican restaurant side. Wait, sorry. <laughs> but one of them did put a dead help right at the intersection. But this one okay, out would really help. Really help. I hadn't noticed it was out. Is this light behind the shoe store? Is that the city? Is that the city? I don't know. It's, it's out. It doesn't work. We, we put up the lights going down on the Ashby building to help light up that alley. That looks so There's nice. One right, one right there behind the I don't, I don't yeah. think that is. Is it up on it where the big three three transformers are on poles? Uh, it's up on pole there. It's a, like a street light. I don't think that one's ours. Oh, okay. I, I don't think. The shoe store, if, if, if it was, 
if we could get a light put up there. I said, I don't know where we could get there. I know we've got a light out down First Street right there, past just the one right past. I don't know what that next street to us is, but uh, right Broad. there past our church. The Broad Street, isn't Broadway. It? Broadway. 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 I think so. That one's out. I just noticed it the other night. Now some of these all these lyrics. Some, some I don't know if it's a KU. <laughs> all some of these lights <laughs> will come on and burn so long yeah. and go off. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's what I was going to ask about. Do you, and when had uh, somebody talk about the one there at the corner of East Eighth Street and Main Street by Are You Sleeping and uh, Liquor Stop? They just said it's it's gone out, and then somebody said, "Well, maybe there's so much light coming off the Liquor Stop marquee, it may be turn it off." So. But they say it's not been on, so that might be another one to have them check on. Uh, Officer Shepard's good about checking on things. Maybe quit looking at the ground and be living up. I don't, want, I don't, want, them, I don't want more links. <laughs> There's one out right there, second in Madison, right here, Broader. So I can see that town. There's none out right here. Yeah, this, this right here come back on in a minute. Yeah, I know. It's one of the ones that's on and off. Yeah. There's several to do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, Larry sets it over the switch and does that. You see anybody <laughs> notice. Here goes Chris. I've already got a timer on there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Won't do any good because after 8 30, he doesn't answer his phone because he's in bed. I was in bed, of course. I got a phone. He Yeah, I praise uh, Amy and Larry a little bit. Most of the <coughs> We had an incident up at the cemetery that had been going on since May, and I got a little hostile in here one night about a week ago, and got right before Thanksgiving, and fussed at them a little bit. They got on the ball, and it got finished this past week, got done. I'm tickled to death. The people are tickled to death. It wasn't anything major, and it wasn't anybody's fault. It was just something that somebody didn't do in the past. This is, this, this is something that happened probably 10, 15 years ago. But it didn't get done, and we finally got it done, and it looks much better. The other thing is the parade. For a little town, I have to praise City of Beaver Dam. They did a great job. That was pretty impressive. I was impressed. And, with uh, that. It lasted one hour. Part of day. Three people have contacted me today wanting to know how much it costs to put a float in our parade. And I said, it doesn't cost anything to put a float in our parade. And they were shocked. They thought it cost, you know, money the to money get the parade. Huh? What the money you missing out on? I know, that's what I thought. We should be charging something. Pay for that a police officer. So, <laughs> so I, I, I think we did. Are we going in closed session? Are we going? I, I would like to go in closed session if we could for a minute, if you don't care. And that's all I have. Okay. Before we do that, Ivy, do you have anything? Okay. Mary? No. I don't either, so. Okay. Motion? I think motion closed in closed session. Second. I think we've had a motion and a second to go back into open session and Mayor Sandifer was called away. He had to leave. So um, no decisions were made in our closed session and I suppose we just need a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor. Hit the road. <laughs>